welcome we have uh, discussed about block relaxation scheme in last few lectures um, what we observed that a big matrix equation can be decomposed into smaller matrix equations and they can be solved uh, with with some coupling in between them and we got an idea that probably the small matrices coming out of the big matrix can be distributed into different computers and a parallel processing can be accomplished. We will discuss about domain decomposition scheme and parallel computing in, in this particular uh, session. Um, the issue is that this is as it shows parallel computing, it has a computing part, it has a computer science aspect also, uh, which is related with efficient design of the hardwares connecting different computers and using an interconnectivity switch and data transfer across different computers that also involve looking into several parallel computing models which is a programming paradigms architectures and uh, different message passing interfaces. However, as we are uh, more interested in the matrix solution part in parallel computing exercise, we will focus more on matrix computing of course, we will use the le least amount of computer science aspect that we need to know in this discussion. If somebody is interested in parallel computing, he has to take separately dedicated courses and lecture sessions on parallel computing. I will give you some information about parallel computing. Uh, computer science aspects on that, uh, but we will more focus on the on how these uh, infrastructures are actually exploited when we do a parallel computing uh, of matrix solvers and what are the issues that the matrix solvers has to take care of when doing this. So, the method we will use for parallel computing because parallel computing can be done for anything when you have your credit card and uh, the bank processes the data of your expenditure, it does some parallel computing or when your uh, insurance claims are processed like all the insurance claims that went to a hospital are processed by some server, it is taking care of parallel computing. So, parallel computing can have plethora of applications, we are particularly focused on matrix uh, solutions and using a method called domain decomposition method. There are other data decomposition methods, data parallelization methods for matrix solvers, which we are not discussing here. So, what is the basic idea of domain decomposition? Partitioning the domain into smaller blocks and solve smaller matrices in different computers in parallel. I have a geometry, I assume it to be a large geometry, where I have to solve uh, nabla square t is equal to 0, Laplacian of t is equal to 0 given all the Dirichlet boundary condition. I will distribute this domain into smaller subdomains and give each of this subdomain to different computers and then in each domain I will write the, I will try to solve the equation. However, the solution has to be continuous over, uh, throughout the domain. So, it cannot be in each solution cannot be independent from other. So, I have to dynamically exchange boundary con data through the boundaries among different domains over the partition of the boundaries. So, the advantage is that when we distribute uh, the domains to different computers, the overall matrix size particular pertinent to one particular computer is much smaller than the net matrix size. Also solving each domain independently and parallel in different computer can increase the speed. So, you can decrease the uh, effective matrix size or also you can increase the speed which are good in terms of the code performance as well as the uh, capacity of our computing res resource. We can now try a really large matrix to be solved which we cannot probably solve in our sing, uh, own PC with a single processor. And this is done by several ways, one is grid block. So, if we have a domain over which we have to do some matrix solutions, we divide it into several blocks. Now, the idea of block partitioning of a matrix will come that each block is solved independently. So, it is a block matrix equation 
which has to be solved over the entire domain and within each block we will do some we will do the block relaxation scheme we will sol solve the equation within each block. This can be very complex a much complex geometry uh, if we, the physical geometry is very complex we can generate multiple blocks within it. If say there is a part which is rotating a turbine uh, blades which are rotating in a domain we can use different blocks for this parts and the matrix equations will be different for this. This is as this is rotating the uh, momentum equation will come in rotating reference frame with Coriolis forces etcetera. However, the momentum equations will be uh, will be fixed uh, Cartesian in fixed Cartesian frame here. So, different equations can be coupled in the same system. Geometry is divided into different blocks, each block has regular structured mesh at least what we are looking into in this case. Complex geometry grid generation can be obtained. A mapping is required at block boundaries that means, zone 1 has boundary with zone 2 and zone 3 may be this is gamma 1 2 and this is gamma 1 3. So, that I can map that this particular boundary maps zone connect zone 1 to zone 2 like that and we can have multiple reference frames multiple physics at different blocks etcetera can be handled using grid blocks. There, there are two possibilities in domain decomposition one is non overlapping domain decomposition the subdomain is intersect uh, domains intersect only at on their interface. So, there is a single interface between the subdomains and uh, overlapping domain decomposition that means, one subdomain has certain overlap with the other subdomain they have two interfaces actually. So, these two are also possible and in uh, uh, blocking of the solution uh, making blocks of the solution vector we have seen that overlapping and non overlapping blocks are also possible and that was done by that particular matrix W if you can remember. Why is parallelization? We discussed it earlier to reduce computational time by dividing number of operations into large number of computers. Each computer will take care of one subdomain and so a uh, large number of computers can be associated with the entire matrix problem and it can be parallelized in a sense then the speed will increase the number of uh, iterations will be same, but each one is solving a small problem. So, uh, each computer will perform all the row calculations local to it in a much smaller time because number of rows uh, pertinent to each computer is smaller and we can increase the speed we in, in less physical time we will get the solution. Also to reduce the matrix size to be stored into single chunk of memory instead of uh, having a large matrix we will break, break down into smaller matrices. So, each computer in one particular uh, uh, RAM location it is storing a small amount of the matrix memory. This both these are helpful for the performance of the code. We will see what can be estimate of computational cost for a large scale problem. So, that I can assert that there is certain certain cases there is need of parallel computing with single processor uh, PCs with standard RAM we cannot solve it. Think of a turbulent flow the grid spacing required for smallest turbulent scale is Reynolds number, Reynolds number is a number which determines the physics of uh, most of the simple flows we encounter flow of fluid. So, Reynolds number to the power 3 by 4. If Reynolds number is 10 to the power 6 for a 3 dimensional grid it needs 10 to the power 13 grids. For an unit box the grid spacing is a Reynolds number to the power minus 3 by 4. So, for an unit box it needs in one direction it needs Reynolds number to the power 3 by 4 uh, grid. So, if the uh, Reynolds number is 10 to the power 6 in th uh, considering 3, di 3 dimension it needs around 10 to the power 13 grid points you can do this calculation yourself. In one time steps if I have to consider what happened to the flow in a small time delta t we have to do a matrix solution that will need order of 10 to the power 13 floating point operations because even with the first stage solver the number of steps is of the order of n, number of operation is of the order of n. So, order of n to the power 13 floating point operations. Typical physical duration of a time step is 10 to the power minus 3 seconds. So, it computing from 
uh, one second, but we have which one time step which is calculating for 10 to the power minus 3 seconds of the flow happening. So, in order to simulate for 10 seconds of flow, what, hap what will happen to the flow in 10 seconds at Reynolds number 10 to the power 6 to resolve the small smallest scale of turbulent, uh, turbulent motion, we will uh, we'll need 10 to the power 17 operations, 10 to the power 17 floating point operations. The first test computer gives 10 giga floating point operations. So, estimated time will be 10 to the power 10 seconds or 317 years in order to solve a uh, flow for 10 seconds in an unit 1 meter uh, long do uh, domain 1 cube cubic meter uh, of fluid has to be what is its turbulence table has to be estimated for 10 seconds. It will take in a computer in a computer with 10 giga flop per second speed it will take 317 years. So, nobody will leave uh, uh, non, non, even uh, nobody's uh, student, student, student will be alive to look into this computing. So, uh, we really cannot do this if we have to uh, simulate a large problem like that with a single computer. So, we have to also the matrix size will be of the order of 10 to the power 13 floats which is 10 to the power 13 into 16 bytes and which is much more than standard gem size. So, forget about solving it 317 years you uh, uh, write your will and ask the ask your next generation to look into the simulations whether the results are coming whether finally, you are getting some matrix solutions. Forget about doing that you cannot start the calculation because the matrix you cannot store in a single computer in a single RAM is 10 to the power uh, 13 into 16 bytes. So, you need to do something else here. and we uh, will look into parallel computing parallel computing has two uh, parts that one there is a memory it stored somewhere and there are processing units which take care of the data given to it and follows the instructions. So, instructions are given to a processing unit it takes reads from the data on the memory stored and works accordingly. So, as per Flynn in 1966 uh, gave how data and instructions can be processed in parallel and will follow two uh, different architectures we usually follow in matrix computing one is single instruction multiple data or SIMD another is multiple instruction multiple data or MIMD. What is in SIMD? There are different computers essentially each computer is following same set of instruction, but they have different data. So, a large large amount of data can be processed by different computers, but the in instruction in each computer is same and MIMD is that there are different instructions to different computers and there are different data which is going to different computers and they are processing this data. This is mostly used in uh, domain decomposition algorithms this model that there are number of computers they are using different data and they are using they are doing different set of uh, instructions that are given to them. However, these computers are connected to each other so that they can communicate in between them. So, we will have lot of computers which will do some ac uh, activity followed by the instruction that I have given with different part type of data. So, different type of block matrices can be handled by different computers and they are talking to each other there is a switch by which these computers are connected and they are uh, sending some is one, one computer is sending something to the main instruction pool which is asking another computer to do something like that or one computer is sharing some data with other computer. The basic idea of parallel computing is that the load memory can be too heavy to carry and the task will be uh, task might take astronomically long time that is what we have seen last cases. So, we have a large piece of memory which has to be taken in a computer by uh, which is a standard serial or standalone computing that is what we, we do uh, we have discussed till now that there is a memory there is a computer and it will do it. In parallel computer it can be shared memory that means 
the memory is the same you have a we need a large memory we now e, there are number of computers each computer is accessing the me, the entire memory and it is accessing the uh, memory elements it is assigned to on that but they can see the entire memory so uh, data has not is it is not important to transfer data from one computer to other each computer is working on the same memory this is called shared memory what, what, diffi the difficult thing is that you need a very large piece of memory and memories are large large rams are usually very expensive much like uh, 1 terabyte ram is much more expensive than i'll say uh, 100 of 1 gigabyte ram or thousands of 1 gigabyte ram so ram this, this is much more expensive to get a large piece of memory all uh, in distributed memory each uh, each one has a small memory each computer has a small memory and they are interconnected by a switch which can take care of the memory which can take some of its memory and send it here or some of the instruction to send it there. Uh, the smaller memory units are needed but more communication because there is some overlap in domain decomposition we are discussing and the overlap data has to be exchanged so more communication is required. The, the essential uh, bottleneck parts of uh, parallel computing is that except doing computation computing for the matrix solvers for finding out the inverses etc doing jacobi or trial of subspace operation etc it has to spend some time for distributing doing a domain decomposition and distributing different parts of the job to different processors it has to synchronize in between the processors when while performing the operations then the different processors has to communicate in between them tasks like synchronization and communication is done by functions called using libraries called MPI, open MP, etc. There is another very new development here which is using graphics card for doing matrix uh, parallel computing. A graphics card is a uh, card with multiple very small processors with small memory which can be connected with the CPU of the main computer it can be added as a card to the main in the motherboard and small amount of mem uh, calculations using small amount of data can be uploaded to the offloaded to the graphics card by the CPU and there there can the interesting thing is that one graphics card comes with thousands of small processing units. So, we can have a uh, great infrastructure of parallelizing it provided we break it down to really small pieces of activity we, is a great infrastructure of parallelizing the job. However, we are not discussing about graphics card uh, CUDA implementation neither we are discussing about MPI open MP implementation we are trying to discuss the mathematics behind the domain decomposition and how can it lead to a parallel computation parallel, comp parallel matrix solver. So, we have a uh, L shaped domain which is distributed into several subdomains. Sigma is the main domain that is distributed into sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 small subdomains and gamma 1 3 and gamma 1 2 are the overlaps between them. Distribute the domain into several subdomains form the matrix equation for each subdomain using interboundary domain values that is that if I try to write down the difference equation for a point here say, say these are the grid points here. So, for this particular i j if I try to write down the uh, matrix equation I need to use I need to use values here, 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 here and here. So, I need to use the boundary value. However, this boundary is pertinent to another subdomain. So, the values are not part of this particular subdomain or the processor attached to this particular subdomain is also it is uh, a task the updating this value is a task of the processor associate to here. So, that is that that is a uh, complex issue which we will uh, discuss now actually. However, when we will form the matrix equation you have to form the matrix equation assuming that this inter 
uh, boundary domain value is known to you, you have to consider this, you cannot omit this. So, you get the matrix equation for the entire subdomain including the uh, off diagonal value that is coming due to this particular points. Now, you propose an algorithm which can solve each domain independently. Solving independently each domain is difficult because of this particular boundary. This the value here belongs to this domain as well as it belongs to this domain. And when once we try to write an equation for a point here, we need a point from this particular domain as well as we need a point from that particular domain. So, you have to think of which a uh, 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 block uh, relaxation scheme where we can write separate some do something special for this. Transfer the interdomain solutions to obtain continuity across the boundaries. So, once you get some solution here, you get some solution here, you have to transfer them across the boundary so that the solution is continuous across the boundary. It does not look like uh, 150 to 50 degree centigrade temperature here and 100 to uh, and um, uh, 250 to 300 degree centigrade temperature here, there should be some continuity in the solution. And converge to a final solution involving all the subdomains. So, you have to get some solution, you will get some solution here, some here, some here and then you will iterate with the boundary values etcetera and then finally, get a converge solution. This is, this is basically a block relaxation algorithm what we need here, but this block relaxation algorithm has to be distributed over different computers. So, that that some algorithm can be proposed where each domain can be solved independently, at least some part of the solution can be carried out independently for each domain. So, we have the uh, matrix equation. Uh, this is Laplacian of u is equal to f, this this particular sign is nothing but nabla square. In the matrix, uh, in the subdomain omega, where omega is collection of all the small subdomains with the boundary condition that on the uh, gamma on the boundary well, uh, well, uh, u is defined. And once we convert this particular problem into difference equation, this differential equation, this is a differential equation. When once we convert into the difference equation, we get a matrix equation. We have seen, seen that several times that a Laplacian equation can be converted into a matrix equation. Let x is equal to sum of x i be the solution at the domain internal points. So, x so, uh, x 1, x 2, x 3 are the domain internal point solutions, x is the solution at domain international point and y be the solution at inter domain boundary. So, we will consider x 1, oh, sorry, x 1, x 1, uh, sorry, x 1, x 2, x 3 are the solutions in, in the in inside the domain and y is this to net solution vector, x is the solution vector in each domain. So, sum of x is the solution in the domain internal point and y are the solutions along the boundaries, the inter domain boundaries. So, now we can write it as a u is equal to b, where a is the matrix which has block diagonal, which is a block diagonal form and there is something apart from block. What is that? That if I try to find out solution of for this x 1, it has some points, some neighbors which is in this particular boundary. Similarly, a point here we have some neighbor in this particular boundary. So, when we will write the equations for this x, there is something which will be connect multiplied with the boundary, interdomain boundary values. Similarly, if I try to write equation for the interdomain boundaries, there is something which is with x 1, some, some neighbor x, x 1, some neighbor in x 2, some neighbor in x 3. So, it will have all the of diagonal f 1, f 2, f 3 terms. So, once we write it as a block partition manner the or the as a block matrix equation, the blocks are b 1, b 2, b 3 and c for x 1, x 2, x 3 and y and the inter uh, block uh, block interboundary connecting coefficients e 1, e 2, e 3, f 1, f 2, f 3. 
and we get a right hand side whatever will come we will get a matrix equation like this. So, A u is equal to b can be converted as a matrix equation b 1 b 2 b 3 u 1 e 2 e 3 f 1 f 2 f 3 c x 1 x 2 x 3 y f 1 f 2 f 3 g. Now, my idea is the question is that how I can solve it independently in each computers. If y is some way known to me this can be distributed into this this is a decoupled problem b 1 x 1 plus e 1 y is equal to f 1 b 2 x 2 plus e 2 uh, e 2 y is equal to f 2 something. So, if y is known this is a this is a solved problem, but y is not known y depends on x 1 x 2 x 3. So, unless I solve for uh, solve it in a coupled manner I cannot get a solution let us see what will happen. A x y is equal to f g which is this is b this block we take at this b this uh, blocks we take as f e this is as f and this is as c b e f c g f g or b x plus e y is equal to f f x plus c y is equal to g. So, we get x is equal to b inverse f minus e y if just just from this equation and now we will substitute this x. So, from this equation we get x is equal to b inverse f minus a y and now we will substitute this f x here. So, we will get an equation for x that f b inverse f minus e y plus c y is equal to f c minus f b inverse e y is equal to g minus f b inverse f. Now, if we can solve this equation see this equation which which we are using solving for y this equation does not have any x component right that I can see here this is a decoupled equation for y only. If I can solve this equation I will get y and once I get y I can solve all the x's independently all the x 1, x 2, x 3 independently it can be really a parallelizable equation. So, what is c minus f b inverse e how can it be solved? This is called Schur component s yes. this is a very important parameter in domain decomposition specially considering parallelization of a domain decomposition algorithm. S y so you have S y is equal to g f b inverse f or y is equal to s inverse g minus f b inverse f. This s inverse has to exist and has to have nice properties. So, that even if we think of iterative schemes we can easily get s inverse. So, finally, the internal point solutions can be obtained as y is equal to x is equal to b inverse f minus e y and with y obtained as s inverse g minus f b inverse f. So, in a domain decomposition component problems sure component is defined as s is equal to c f b inverse e. Solution at the internal problems of different subdomains are found as x is equal to b inverse f minus e y, y is equal to s inverse g minus f b inverse f. Once we can write it like that this this are decoupled problems that means, finding y does not need any of the x interestingly what we can see. So, x has been eliminated here. So, if we can solve it we can find y and then we can give y to different processors and try to solve x. If s inverse exists y can be found and hence x can also be found. So, the domain decomposition method will stand if s inverse exists that is that if this is done then domain decomposition stands for any decomposition will stand if we can find an s which is which is invertible. To solve x is equal to b inverse f minus e y and y is equal to s inverse g minus f b inverse f. That is the problem in the matrix form which we have to get get now and we see that whether this is parallelizable now. B is a block diagonal matrix this part is B 
of A is equal to B. Inverse of B can be found in a decoupled sense as a disjoint point because this is a play of diagonal matrix B inverse can be easily found out. Hence, the sets of the equation can, uh, given can be solved provided y is made available to the particular process. This can be solved independently in different processors provided y is already known to the processors. And one method for that is Schwarz alternating procedure, alternate between the domains for solution. Solve Dirichlet problem on one domain in each iteration, solve Dirichlet problem on one domain in each iteration and consider boundary conditions based on most recent solution of other domains. So, essentially you start with some guess value of gamma, consider that the problem in one domain is completely Dirichlet, all other boundaries are known and that inter interconnected boundaries uh, guess value as is the Dirichlet value. So, solve it and then you solve it for the other domains and again based on this solution update gamma by solving something like Schur component equation and repeat it. So, the algorithm is choose an initial guess u until convergence in each domain solve gamma u is uh, uh, Nablus, uh, uh, sub Laplacian u is equal to f with the boundary, boundary conditions in the, uh, in the inter block boundaries, inter domain boundaries and this will come from the initially from the guess solution, first step it will come from the guess solution and later update the u value, uh, values on the boundaries and do find uh, repeat it till convergence. But we have to see whether this process converges actually, because this is not like our direct solution method, not like standard block Jacobi iteration, we have to see whether this convergence. And, uh, this is Laplacian of u, uh, grad u, de delta u is not Laplacian u u. The algorithm sweeps through S subdomains and solves the original equation in each domain based on the boundary condition that is updated from most recent values of u. So, when we are solving for each domain, we are using a boundary condition which is coming from up other domains and this that is the most recent value of u available to the uh, to, uh, to the processors. We can start with a global initial guess st and update it in each domain during the iterations and then we have to check interchange the we have to send the boundary condition from one domain to other to maintain continuity and updates. Uh, for overlapping domains, so this is an example of overlapping domain, domain 1 has an overlap up to, so this is still domain 1 is there, domain 1 has an overlap in domain 3, some, some part in domain 3. Similarly, domain 3 has some part in domain 1, this is overlap, this is an this is a example of an overlapping domain. For overlapping domain, we can use something a uh, Schwarz multiplicative procedure that solve in each domain solve A delta is equal to R, R is the residual, compute x such that x is updated with x plus delta x i in that particular domain and also update y. Now, the inter domain boundary say the boundary of domain 1 is a member of domain 3, the boundary of domain 1 is a member of domain 3. So, how will it be updated? It will be updated by the solution whatever we are getting as the internal point solution of domain 3 that will go and update the boundary for domain 1. So, compute a, the inter, solve the inter domain problems independently and update the boundary values for the other domains. And then for uh, uh, then calculate the residual for each domain use, using the already known residual residuals and the E vector E is coming from the boundaries again. So, compute update the residual in each domain. The idea is if I try to explain the steps that choose an initial guess u to the solutions, iterate till you get convergence for in each domain solve the Poisson uh, Laplacian of u is equal to f with the boundary condition which is coming from the other domains, update the values at the boundaries for the other domains and till convergence you do it in all the uh, subdomains till you reach a global convergence and when and this step can be done parallel in 
different computers because gamma ij is the gauge value which is going into different computers. Now, we have to see that whether this step actually converges, what is the convergence of this particular step. And this the theorem of convergence for Schwarz procedure is given that if the initial gauge u0 is chosen such that the internal vector x0 is, uh, is obtained from the solution of the block per, uh, uh, of the block relaxation of the matrix, then the iterations are identical to gauss seidel sweep of Schwarz Schur component. And if Schur component exists, they must converge. So, domain decomposition should converge if we can choose the initial gauge according to the calculation of x based on the values y. So, if, if the initial gauge is consistent with the equation system, the, uh, the domain decomposition is a gauss seidel uh, sweep of Schur component and they, they, they must converge. The idea is divide the domain into number of subdomains, domain overlaps are allowed such that full row equation for each internal point of the subdomain is available. Start with a global guess, update solution at each subdomain locally, consider the interdomain boundaries as Dirichlet with the last updated solution value and this is a parallel step that updating each subdomain locally. Update the boundary values in one subdomain as obtained as by the local solution of neighboring domains, this is a data transfer step. So, from one domain to other you have to transfer data. Iterate over the domains till you get a global convergence, you have to synchronize the residuals, you have to obtain residuals from each domain and send it to uh, one particular computer and it has to check over different uh, uh, values of the residuals, what is the global value of residual, whether it has converged, this is a synchronization step. So, the elements of parallel program when you have distributed the uh, geometry into different subdomains, initialization of parallel environment, allocation of decomposed domain to the processors which needs load balancing, idle time minimization, calculation in each domain, synchronization to uh, reduce latency. Now, none will sit latent, all the computers will do almost similar amount of job, none will sit idle. Communication avoiding, there can be uh, bottleneck in communication one is trying to send, another is also trying to send, there can be a bottleneck. So, avoid that assembly of results and termination. Overheads come due to initialization, synchronization and communication. And this is our in-house code where number of uh, solutions obtained per in, in per second. So, we got in one second how many uh, matrix can be, matrix solutions can be obtained for one particular large matrix. And we have seen that as the number of processors are increasing up to 50, this is in the number of solutions in one second is increasing, speed of the computation is increasing and that then it is going kind of flat. Because communication overhead has been increased so much that there is no increase in the performance or computational speed which is number of iteration per second. Ideally as you increase the number of processor, it should follow a 45 degree slope, it will also increase. But it increases, but it does not follow the 45 degree slope due to the overheads which is due to communication, synchronization and latency. So, uh, try to explain some uh, aspects of parallel computing using domain decomposition in this particular lecture. Thank you.